Hey, welcome to the Biss Podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about Bionicle, show off some cool Bionicle mocks, and give you some inspiration for future things that you can build in the future. As with every Bionicle uh, Inspiration Series podcast, we have a, a guest on just to get some additional opinions on some mocks that they've made or mocks that other people have made, just to yeah, just to get a second opinion because it's always always nice to to have a good chat with someone and always nice to yeah, grab a second opinion. And the guest that we have this week is our good friend Jafer, who has been on the mo- on the mock Inspiration Series pod. What am I saying? Who has been on Biss for quite a while now? So it's good to finally talk to him. How are you doing, Jafer? I'm doing great. Yeah, I I also happen to listen into the Bionicle Inspiration series a fair bit too. It's fantastic. Yeah, it it certainly does make very nice background noise when you're building stuff. Oh, that's and good yeah. to hear. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad that works. Awesome. Yeah, the claims are true. <laughs> yeah, good, nice. So as per usual, we're gonna review a mock that Jafer has made, a mock that Jafer picked that he wants to talk about that someone else has built, and then I threw in. A mock that uh, I wanted to talk about too. Uh, do you want to just get stuck straight into it, Mr. Jafer? Sure, I don't see why not. Yeah. Um, shall we start with your mock as well? Ah, uh, very well. Yes. So this mock is called Caterpillar by, of course, Jafer. Um, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you start because because you said you had a lot to talk about with this. Yeah. Um. So I kind of just want to talk about the seed like part for this build, which if you if you look hard enough, you probably would have figured oh. it out. Can I guess it? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so, like, I was going to talk initially about the minifigure needle on the, the mouth there, but I don't think that's it. I think it's the the lime minifigure pans on yes. the head. Yes. yes, nailed it! Yeah, um, I'm not sure if uh, this happens for you as well, but um, when I go to, um, like, conventions, uh, yep. they have, like, they just give you some free parts from lug bulk. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I I love that so much because a free Lego yes, yeah. um and also because you get some really weird pieces that you wouldn't think of ordering or using totally and so like yeah in my first the first convention I went to which was Brickfest, uh, Newcastle last year mm-hmm. yeah I got a bunch of lime pans and I was thinking to myself oh man these would be so useful if they were in another color because I don't know limes not really something that I could see myself using with those. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um and then I was just, you know, thinking about which plague mech to do next because that's just a thing that I I do now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, I thought, wow, it'd be really cool if I could like make those segments on like a caterpillar. I was originally gonna do it for like the torso, like and, and like the chest or something. Uh, yeah. But um yeah, I saw how they worked with those exo force arms and then, you know, linked them all together with the sausage piece and Oh yeah, uh, it made <laughs> it made a really cool effect. That's awesome. Actually, I just realized how cool that is that the the sausage piece there, how it's sort of just above the eye. Like the fact that that it is red doesn't yeah, really. It's not a problem. It kind of just that flows was, nicely with it. That was such a happy accident because I was yeah. I was originally going to use purple as the accent color. Ooh. But um, yeah, and then just I don't know, red ended up working nicely and it flowed really well with the sausage, so... That's cool, that's cool. That's the weirdest sentence, but that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Lego would that make yeah, sense. Right? Yeah. I had, um... Oh, I swear... No, I haven't talked about this in a podcast before. Um, when I went to my first Lego convention, when I was um, unpacking stuff, um, my dad and my friend's mum were, like, helping us, um, like, pack up what we'd made. And uh, they... Uh, like as we were packing like my friend like cut himself like b- b- building or like taking something apart like you know when you do that sometimes you're like trying yeah, to place two pieces mean. together and you like cut your finger or something um, he did that and he's like ah oh, damn it and um, uh, he was saying like oh, have you ever done that before I'm like yeah no I've done that and I was like I think the worst I've ever had is when I cut my finger on a burp um, and I was like that really hurt and he's like oh yeah that would have really hurt and my on dad and his oh do you know what a burp is? what's a burp? Ah, I'll throw up a picture in the thing. Um, it stands for Big Ugly Rock Piece. Oh, um, right. Okay, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Um, But it's funny, li- literally like what you were just there, my dad was like, he's like, what are you talking about? What you-, you cut yourself on a burp? Like, that makes no sense. Like, uh, yeah, the weirdest conversations you can have <laughs> about Lego. Anyway, um, oh, yeah. yeah, that's so cool how you're able to use parts like, those, like, like that that otherwise you'd think are useless. I think that's always... I don't know. There's something about that when you're able to do that with a mock. It's just it's so rewarding. It's good. Uh, I I love I love just accidentally think like just building something in a certain color scheme, and then when you're kind of mm. grouping together pieces that you have in that color, 
and you see a really really weird piece which just so happens to yeah. perfectly fit in with what you're doing yeah right it's Definitely. just oh, yeah. it's beautiful the um I just briefly touched upon it, but I want to talk about it a bit more. The little um, minifigure needle part there, sort of just just under the yeah, eye with the mouth there. That's same kind of deal, yeah. It was it was just something in the color scheme. That's cool. Like, hey, that'd be neat. I love how I love how um, just just in terms of it, like the plague mech idea, just how like a little little tiny detail like that, like a random minifigure part, adds so much more life to it and sort of really reflects the kind of concept a lot more. I think that's really cool. Especially just, yeah, like that, using, kind of like you said, like weird random parts you wouldn't think about using or just small parts like minifigure utensils to, to enhance something. It's That's really yeah. cool. Because it's really weird. Um, This this whole mock, a lot of the highlights are just like leftover pieces, I guess. Oh, yeah. Like, because um, for a mock that I did a while back, uh, it was called Yig, the Abyssal Serpent. It was kind of a thing similar to my Dagon mock, except with spring cool. green and whatnot i bought two of the um uh goblin king dragons from yes. the Solves line and yeah like you know buying it's sp- sp- mostly for just like all the spring green mm. pieces but it's such a great parts but it came with a lot of really cool black parts as well just very yeah. useful pieces and yeah all those little um those little tooth pieces um running down the the body of yeah. the caterpillar those are all just from the little like back little greenery kind of side build oh, no that came way. with that That's set so cool. yeah yeah so after buying two of it i had a lot of those little two mm. pieces left over that's really awesome yeah oh, that's cool that's really cool i was gonna just quickly ask because i realized as i was like oh, the noodle piece works so well for a plague mech and then i was like what is a plague mech jafer can mm. you explain <laughs> oh god <sighs> Is, ironically enough, you're asking the wrong guy. Oh, really? I feel like it's kind of it's kind of just been defined by I don't know. Uh, this this contest honestly is like brought out so many different ideas that I would never mm. have thought of. It's really interesting because when I build my plague mechs, I kind of end up making just mechs that are vaguely inspired by insects. But it was really weird to see that with the contest, it was more so the other way around, whereas a lot of the entries were very mechanical insects right yeah so i thought that was really cool to see like everyone's different cool, yeah. takes on it but anyways uh, the plague mech mm. type deal i made one mock a fair while ago it would be over mm-hmm. a year now ago i made mantis which is the first plague mech and it wasn't a plague mech at the time it was just a robot thing that i called mantis because it looked mm-hmm. vaguely bug-like and then I ended up making another vaguely bug-like mech that I called Dragonfly, and because I needed, because I organized everything on Flickr into albums, yeah, I thought these two are really similar. They're like weird bug mech things. I'll put them in the same album. What do I call the album? And I just I thought like swarm of bugs, locusts, plague, plague mech. Put that together nice. and chucked it into a folder called Plague Mac. Uh-huh. That's kind of how it started. That's and so now cool. I just keep making more of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's really cool. Isn't that, isn't that? That's literally been the theme of this podcast so far. It's like happy accidents. That's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's my entire like building experience in a nutshell. <laughs> just one big happy accident. But I think there's so much with that. Like, it's such a hard thing to, to put into words. But I think art constantly exists in that thing. It's 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 why I always use the word playing whenever I'm do uh, talking in bis. Is is because it's through playing that you get those happy accidents and that you get like the weird crazy stuff that you wouldn't have got before you know like yeah. um it, it's it's like you said if i hadn't just decided ah, put this random line piece on here let's try that let's see what it's like you wouldn't have got the result whereas if you like sat down wrote an essay about it planned it out you probably never would have tried that you know um yeah yeah that's really cool there's there's some weird weird thing with art that does that but it's it's really cool yeah, it's just when you're kind of noodling around with pieces, you're not really like have a you don't really have a certain goal in mind. Yeah, that you often end up coming up with the best ideas. Totally, totally, exactly that. Yeah, yeah. I just because you mentioned like mantis and dragonfly, I was I just opened the plague mech folder. I'm looking at them now, and I was about to I was about to just start talking about mantis. I was like, no, no, <laughs> we're on caterpillar. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do a plague mech bionicle inspiration series episode. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool to see. Uh, I'd, I reckon you should you should focus more on other people's ones though because there were there were so many in the contest that I just 
that I really loved that mm. it was it was so hard for me to only narrow it down to the amount that I did for the finalists because I don't know there were just so many really unique ideas yeah 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 it was incredible some of the results for that contest there were some really really good entries like throughout mm. yeah it was incredible it's it's awesome like I just just to see how people pick pick something like that up it's that's really cool with a with a contest um i'm annoyed because i i'm annoyed i kind of missed it in a sense um like when when biocup came out i kind of did one episode about it and i didn't do any more but i was like ne- next time when biocup comes out i'll try and do like really consecutive uh like it, i don't know what one per round or something like an episode on that to kind of like cover the contest and also like promote the contest and stuff like that so i'm I disappointed really that, yeah. Yeah, yeah oh good cool cool um i'm disappointed i missed that with the plague mech contest but um next yeah, next contest right. that comes around i'll <laughs> i'll see what i can do but uh yeah awesome um but yeah uh just before we move on mm. i kind of want to just do a like quick shout out to an entry in that contest sure. which i really liked go ahead which i never i never mentioned it it was from someone who I haven't actually seen any other mock from them mm. until the um until the contest. Mm. It was it was like a sp- it was a spider I think like a redback spider or a tarantula or oh. tarantula or something. Mm. Um, and it was primarily generation one pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was just it was just really cool the way that they did it because it wasn't humanoid at all. I I just sent it to you on Instagram. Okay. But um yeah it, it's kind of got like. A, it's got like a f- eight-legged base and then kind of comes up at the front oh. and back and i don't know it's just it's just such a like unique and weird looking design yeah it is wow that's so cool i actually love that the photography of it is on a, a like a kitchen or like an out outdoor like bench yeah. just because it is a spider it's just like oh yeah i found this outside and i took a photo of it. <laughs> that is really cool uh, yeah i don't know this one just like really spoke to me for some reason yeah i agree with you i think it is the fact that it's all very I can't see any G2 parts on there. I'm probably missing them yeah, all, but... It's, it's, like, I can't even, like, pick out any system or, like, even mm. just, like, technique. It's just all bionicle. Yeah. It's almost like, you know when you look back at, like, a 12-year-old Mox and it's, like... Yeah. yeah. Rakshi hadn't even come out yet or something and it's, like, oh, I just made a mock using all the Toamata parts and you're, like, that's incredible for just the parts that you had at that time, which was very, very mm. little. It's almost like yeah. I could see this mock having been made when Bionicle was like, I don't know, four years old. Uh, yeah. And at that time it would have been incredible, but it still like holds up a standard today. That's so cool. Yeah. So, you know, shout out to Mitsu Mox. Yeah. Nice work, Mitsu. You, you, have, you have apparently become the bonus mock for this episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Nice. I'll, um, I'll throw up photos for that. Uh, don't worry, people watching. You would have already seen it. So just quickly awesome. before we finish the um, um, a, a Caterpillar, um, I love those fingers. I love the how there's just a simple addition oh, there because yeah. like you, you could have just you know used Exophil's fingers but then you added like you know little additions to it it look it just makes it look more like kind of bug like and cool I really like that mm. yeah I had I was using the original like because I for a while I used the same hands for all of my plague mechs which is the ones with the like droid arms with the uh, Exophil's robot hands at the ends of mm-hmm. them. Yeah, because this one was a bit bulkier, I wanted to do something a bit different, and I really liked the way this turned That's out. That's cool. The thumb's a bit janky, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with I it. I like it. I think it's good. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. So, let's move on to the next one. Let's do let's do the, the, the Mitch one. All right. So, if, if anyone out there has spoken to me or knows me well enough, they'll know that I'm a huge fan of Mitch, aka Gamma Ray. I take so much inspiration from him, and I just like every single mock that i see by him it's just one that i always keep coming back to Mm. which is something that like really speaks for a mock in my opinion like if if you like want to keep coming back and looking at it and every time you see it you see like little things that you love more and more about it it's just yeah Yeah. and i get that with all of his stuff which is yeah that's awesome a testament to how good of a builder he is totally and yeah i saw this one when browsing i think I think I was just like googling like cool bionicle mocks, like, you know, when you just do that sometimes yes. just to see what comes up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and then I think I just like scrolled past that, and I thought it was really really cool. And then I saw him posted on his Instagram a little while back, mm. and I, I didn't know that it was from him. And I was like, well, okay, I guess that makes sense because it's it's really freaking cool. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm um, I'm always a sucker for teal pieces. Yeah, right starters and i just think the combination of just like the muted grays gray colors the the teal 
the purple and that little bit of like rusty tan yes. on the arm. Yes. It's just oh it's so cool. It's so cool. Like I love I love the idea of just that little small highlight of like rust there. Like it adds so much character to it. It's just like yeah, he's a robot, his arm is rusted. Like so, you know. It's so cool, especially too like I mean, it may not have been the story. It may have been like, oh, I got this cool idea. I'm going to try this. But he could have easily been like, he built the first hand and he's like, oh, crap, I don't have any of these parts in gray. I need to, uh, I need to, I need, I need, do I brick link them? It's like, no, let's, let's, let's try like a rusted design. And that's, that's so cool. That's so cool. And also there's like very subtle uses of stickers on some of the tail pieces. Yeah. 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 And like, that's something that I kind of want to branch out into doing more because I've, I've tried using stickers in the past, but I I often end up being being very minimalistic with them because mm. I don't know. I, f- I feel like it's either like you know, go hard or go home. Yes, I see what you mean. When it, I see what you mean. When it comes to stickers. That said, like with Caterpillar before, he had um little like kind of caution symbol thing on like the flamethrower gun. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Mm. Yeah, um, that was from um, <laughs> uh, you know the, the Lego Movie, the like yeah orange motorbike thing yes like, yes yeah yeah it was it was just one of the little exhaust pipes oh that. there you go oh, okay yeah. oh so that was even the piece that it was meant to have the sticker on yeah, yeah. oh that's yeah. cool oh nice it's entirely <laughs> purist know. that's awesome <laughs> when, when when stickers get old enough they kind of like you know they're very hard to take off without them chipping and stuff yeah totally so yeah i just kind of rolled with that anyway, but anyways cool. we're talking about this month yeah. i love the uh torso design here just how like like using that one piston part in teal i love seeing that part on a mock because it like actually has that spring on it and it looks so biomechanical cyborgy whatever it just fits so well with the bionicle and so seeing it like that and also sort of seeing almost kind of the rough shape of what like the toa mata had on their torsos that kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. tri beam thing um there's something really bionically about that and this looks incredible yeah i love that I just, I just really love that design element in general on anything. Just like the whole, like, yeah, just like piston mm. middle torso. Mm, exactly. Um, it's why I love the design of the uh, the Gundam Barbados so much. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if you know what that looks like. No but idea. It's, got, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll get you to bring a pic- picture up of it. Sure. But, um, sure. Yeah, it's got a very similar design like that. That's cool. That's awesome. I also really enjoy the um, the foot design on this, like using the Tohunga head there. Like, yeah, what? that's really clever. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, a nice, easy way to add a bit of greebling to the top of the foot. Totally. Plus two, like, maybe I'm just not looking in the right places, but I I don't think I've seen a Tohunga head used on a mock in, like, ever. Mm. And that's a great way to yeah. do it. Now you come to mention it, I don't. I don't think I have either. Mm, mm. That said, I did a bis episode once where I was like, I haven't seen a yellow mock in like ever. And then the next like three episodes in a row, I put a yellow mock in there, and I was like, okay, I accept my mistake. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> um, With the amount of mocks that you look at, it's easy. I'm sure it'd be easy to kind of get things every now and then. Exactly. Exactly. I I I can't quite see how he's done it, but. When, when you first showed me, like, oh, I want to put this mock in the episode, um, I, pu- I brought, like, little notes just to touch upon, but I totally missed the design of the sort of... Sh- uh, I keep calling them shins. The the knee. Um, how there's those, like, Mystica fin parts yeah. and then the lightsaber rod with the, the purple, like, claw. I don't know how he's done that, but that's so cool. That's such an awesome, like... Oh, I didn't, I didn't notice, the, like, the purple claw and the lightsaber rod in the middle, mm. but that just... Yeah. Yeah. The- yeah, that, that's really cool. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know those, who did it. It's cool. Those, those Mystica fins are really, really useful. Yeah. Of, yeah, they're just like... It's it's weird that a piece with such like a... I don't know, such a strong angle to it is... Yes. Yeah. Yes, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Definitely. Yeah, I see people use it for like, um... Like, groin cloths a lot. Mm. Mm, okay. Yeah. When you, when you have like two of them together. Oh, yeah. Except, you know... Around. Yeah, that would look nice actually. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of loincloths, I like his little um like kind of waist cape thingamajig. Um just oh, using those oh, yeah, like, with the tread parts, yeah. You see what I mean? Just like every time you look at it, you see something different. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Oh, and he's got them on his shoulders as well. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, literally yeah. what you just said, exactly. Yeah. Wow. That's very cool. Yeah. Also, like I've I've never owned any teal pieces before oh, no. until very, very recently where I bought um a bunch of slices mm-hmm. and it's such a pretty color yeah 
I like I see why people rave about it so much, mm-hmm. and I'm so glad they brought it back. I really want to try making something with it. Yeah, I remember posting a video on Instagram when I bought a recent set that came with Teal. It was like an elf set, um, and like mm. I played like some like dramatic music, and I was just like, "Oh, it's back!" Like, oh, um, in the video, and this guy messaged me. He's like, "Teal's Teal's been around for a while now, man," and I'm like, "No, dude, like it's been dead for like ten years. What are you talking about?" And he's like, "No, no," and I was like. I don't mean to be a I don't mean to be a know it all, but I can confirm it's not. And he sent me this link, and I was like, "What?" Turns out, 2015, when the Simpsons minifigure line it was either the first or the second wave. I can't remember. Um, Edna Bart's teacher, she had a cloth piece that was teal, and I was like, "No, it's not." And I went upstairs wow. to where the minifigure was. And I was like, "Oh my god, it was." And I was like, "Wow, I have been proven wrong." And I was like, "Thank you for telling me this." So yeah, apparently it was around like three years ago i was like oh okay <laughs> a teal cloth piece you say yeah so it's like um you know how some minifigures have like kind of almost like a dress um oh, yeah, yeah. it was one of those yeah i'll throw up a photo um does it have any like printing on it or is it just straight teal? i think it's straight teal i'll double check i'll hot google mm. right now let's see what we can do that sounds really useful yeah yeah especially if you have like well, if, heaps of them yeah if i decide to go through with this teal thing i don't know i don't know what the hell it's gonna be but if i decide to go through with it i'll have to take a look at that yeah no please uh, please do make a teal um plague oh, is it a, is it a plague mech is that what you were thinking i i, I, I can't make any promises <laughs> but yeah i don't know the whole plague mech thing is kind of getting a bit old right now i'm gonna take a bit of a break from it yeah nice yeah okay um yes it is teal hell yeah yeah and it's yeah it's no printing right, well, exactly. i'll have to keep an eye on that yeah there you go I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, wow. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Yeah, we were talking about the mock. I don't know. I feel like we've covered everything. Oh, quickly. I love the head design. It's yeah. real simple. But it's, it's real nice. Yeah. Just the, um, Metro head there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's simple, but it does the job, you know? Yeah, totally. It's a little bit of a pin head. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not a bad yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah, I love this mock. Shout out to, shout out to Mitch. Yeah. Any final thoughts on that? Or should we move on to the I next think one? we're good to move on. Sounds like a plan. Um, so this one was the one I picked. It's by Marco, and it's called GYR-58. Yes. And it, it would be a yeah. sin to mention this without mentioning... I, I believe it was called The Parasite by... Oh, I don't know by, this. Oh. Oh, no, I do know this. <laughs> I, I even read that he's like, this was in a collab with uh, Jockson, and I was just like, oh, okay, I just dismissed that, but fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Sorry, um, continue. Finish finish your thought. <laughs> but I uh, yeah, it's this was um this was made for the uh the contest happening over on BZ Power right now. Oh check that guys. Where you have to team up with another person and build two mocks which complement each other really well. Um, nice. I've entered it with Mr. Anthony Wilson, the Secret Walrus. That's Oh, is that with your yeah, dragon? That, oh, that's, that's so cool. Entry, yeah. Oh, nice. But, um, yeah, this was the first entry that I actually saw go up for the competition, and I'm pretty sure it's uh-huh. one of the only other ones that is up right now. Everyone's furiously oh, wow. working away at theirs right now. Yeah. Well, there you go, people watching. Get on it, because then you could easily win a prize, because yeah. there's not many entries. Number one prize is the Bionicle Art Book. Ah, I am, so good. I'm very, very interested in getting. Yeah, yeah, totally. But, yeah, um... I don't know, yeah, uh, Marco and Jockson did a fantastic job with this. Um, yeah. And I think it's it's really good that they were um, they were able to actually see each other in person and take photos of the two together. Really? Yeah. That's so cool. They, they live very close to each other. And it's, it's really wow. cool because um, the parasite kind of latches over the robot's head and then its tail comes around down its arm, so it's got like a bit of a claw hand at the end. What? Yeah, they look really cool together. Where, are, where are photos of this? I have not seen that photo. That sounds cool. Um, I'm pretty sure either Joxon or Cesium have a um, brick shelf gallery in the description. Okay, because I just looked at the brick shelf gallery on um on Joxon's, but it wasn't there. Yeah, I'll 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 yeah. track it down later on if if we can't find it. Yeah, I'll, as as we're talking, I'll scroll through BZ Power because I, I assume he's like posted it oh, on yeah. the um yeah, submission thread. I'll I'll yeah. check there. Okay, cool. Um, sorry, let us continue. Yeah. Um, that's so cool. That's so cool that they're doing a collab. Because it's funny, when, when you posted your dragon and when he did this, even though I only just realized that was the, that's what he meant when he said collab, um, 
I don't know, I was just kind of like, oh, that's really cool. They're obviously in like a Discord server together or something. And they're like, hey, want to do a collab? I'm like, that's really cool. Like, great to see two mockers want to come together and make something like in a, mm. in a similar style or a similar vein. I'm like, that's awesome. But um, no, the fact that it's also for a contest, that's even cooler. Just just, just the fact that, yeah, people are getting together and, and making stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a, a great way to keep the community alive. Oh, yeah. And hopefully, considering um, Anthony lives in New Zealand, maybe one day I'll end up going to a convention with him and we'll be able to display our two dragons together that would be awesome that'd be so cool he's from new zealand this all makes yeah. sense now. there you go because i just didn't ask him when he was at Brickworld. i just i just i don't know because i knew he was at brick fair so part of me was like oh maybe he's just he's from america he just like travels a lot i don't, I don't know mm. but um ah, it all makes sense now yes, it's all coming together it is, it but, is. Um, yeah anyways back onto the actual mock at hand um mm. so Something really cool about this mock that is is kind of a theme in <laughs> Marco's builds in general is mm -hmm. just like the really really unorthodox connections for pieces. I don't know how half of them hold together. Like I don't know. Oftentimes I guess mm. they're more solid than they look. But the fact that he's used the flick fire missiles as ball joints for like mixel sockets yeah. in so That's many cool. places. Yeah. It's it's really cool and. It is. Not to mention, just very useful, because... Yeah. I don't know. The, the flick fire missile has a really, like, good connection point, so mm. it'd be really... It makes for really nice mechanical detail all around. Yeah, totally. Exactly that. I'm really, I want to just, like, put the two together now. <laughs> Do I have any around me? I don't know. Mm. Um, yeah, just to see what that's like, because that is. That's a cool connection. I, I love how, um, on that kind of, like, weapon arm there, how just shoving in a bunch of wires through yeah. there makes that look so much cooler. Like, it would have looked nice without that, but adding that in is, 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 is such a small addition, but it's really, really nice. Yeah, like, not only is it a nice splash of colour, but it, like, to kind of break up the, the grey and yellow, but it just, I don't know, it just looks so convincingly robotic. Yeah, totally. Totally does. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And yeah, I don't know. I also... No, go uh, on. Just, like, the fact that he's managed to blend old grey and new grey um, is something that I <laughs> I find very hard to do because it kind of works in it in this in this because A he's spaced them around like really well so there's like there's not too many big clusters of light grey and too many big clusters of dark grey not, well, mm. not dark grey but you know what I mean like new grey and old grey yeah. and also yeah. the old grey kind of looks like dirty which works for it being a construction bot because you know you got like the paint chipping on the stickers on the calves and everything and it just yeah, yeah it looks very very thematically accurate for what he was going for it definitely does yeah there's a lot to appreciate about it there is totally i i i want to talk quickly about those um that hand design there mm. like I, I i part of me was like oh it'll probably be like have some i don't know i don't I guess that's an illegal connection with the um, flick fire missile and the the mixel joint thing there. I don't know. I have to try it. Like I don't. I don't. Maybe it's not putting stress on it. Maybe it's just lightly putting it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, I sort of assumed that hand would be, but it's not. Oh, well, maybe if you classify. I don't know. There's so many weird rules of the legal what's techniques. A, what's Who illegal knows? about the hand? What am I? What am I missing? Well, here? the the like system plates being shoved into the um oh. the oh. yeah yeah, yeah. Play. <laughs> the um the the pinholes there yeah mm. yeah I think you could argue that's illegal because it's putting stress I on mean, it and like years from now it might pop out or something I don't know. it is but like yeah. yeah that's why I haven't done an illegal techniques episode yet is just because there's so many rules about yeah. illegal connections I, mean, like, I always thought it was like you're really seriously bending apart and then I had a conversation with someone they're like no no here's like a guide that shows you what it mm. is and it's stuff like that where it's like you shouldn't put an axle through a, a brick because it's technically going to break in a few years time and you're like well fair enough but I'll do what I want <laughs> you know what I mean yeah I don't know just like some of the like illegal connections are so so petty like it's just so like sometimes yeah yeah it's like who who actually cares like you know, like, <laughs> I don't know like yeah. putting two clip joints as... together you know just kind of yeah yeah you know, it's just a useful technique and it like it just feels right like if it if it snaps together mm. so like so seamlessly like you know it doesn't really bother me but anyways yeah anyways. yeah see like i always feel that um cuz there's some things that were illegal connect or considered illegal and then lego puts it in a set and everyone's like but 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 and you know <laughs> yeah yeah 
Anyway, back to the mock. Um, I love how... I've sort of mentioned this a bunch in the past, but I'll say it again. I love how Marco is able to create a mock with... I mean, there is still a decent amount of parts in here, but there's also not. You know, like, the whole shoulders are, are essentially just, like, kind of four or five pieces sort of thing. Or maybe a bit more than that, but you know what I mean. Like, it's, it's a very minimal design, but it gets a very awesome robotic effect to it. Yeah. And it looks great, you know? No, yeah, I definitely get what you mean. Mm. I don't know, there's just, like... I've, there's so many weird, like, technique pieces that I just don't mm. know about. <laughs> yeah. Like, whatever the heck that part is there on the leg, the, the um, upper leg. Yeah, there. like, yeah. what? <laughs> what am I looking yeah. at? Is it, like, a... <laughs> is it, like, a worm joint in the middle? Or, not worm joint, worm gear? I like... have... I have one of those parts. I have no idea where it comes from, but that worm bit that you're talking about in the middle there, that sort of uh, almost kind of gear-looking bit mm. is connected to those sort of two beams and the circles on them. That is all one long part. Oh, really? It's quite a long part. So, like, part. the thighs yeah. are pretty much just one big piece. Yeah, essentially. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like, I don't remember his name. Oh, I, ha- I hate it when I want to talk about Amokas, but I don't remember their name. Um... He's on brick shelf. He doesn't do Bionicle. He does mainly system stuff. But he likes to build very, very small things. Um, mm. Everything is very much like minifigure utensils or like like he'll build like a pram or like a, a shopping cart or mm. trolley, whatever you want to call it. Um, but he'll do it very, very well and often with really obscure small parts. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just looking through it, you're like, that's a piece. Okay. Mm. And then you like kind of look it up and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, fair. That. that's a decent, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's cool to see that. It's cool to see really obscure parts being used, yeah. yeah. Speaking of illegal connections and very small mocks, um, I'm mm-hmm. not sure if you know about Lego Willgab. I do, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Like uh, That's his Instagram handle. I can't remember what he is on Flickr. I think it's just Willgab. But um, he does, he does like, little micro-scale transformers. Oh, okay. Like, from the from the movies, like, the movie designs. Oh, I might know who you mean, yeah. Yeah, and, like, they're, they're chock full of illegal connections, but... They just look so accurate at such a small scale, and it's I don't know, it's right. really cool. When you see them like yes. all together, they look really nice. Yeah, I know exactly who you mean. That's cool. Yeah. Go Google Lego Will Gab. Maybe I'll put photos. I don't know. I keep saying that, and I know in posts I'm going to be like, "Why did I say this, Ben? What are you doing?" I'm sorry. I keep going. <laughs> I keep going. <laughs> no, it's tangents. it's good. It's good. No, the tangents are great. That's the point of a podcast. So. <laughs> Speaking of tangents, actually, I think we've reached a good uh, little little stopping point there with uh, with that mock there. So um, let's let's move on to the questions where we can easily go on tangents and no one will get upset. What am I? What are, what are, what are the questions we're going to go to? So uh, I I gave Jay for very late notice, which is my bad. But right. I have three questions that I'm going to ask Mr. Jay for, and then we're going to go to audience questions. Hmm. Um, so Jay for the first question that I want to ask you. Yes. Talk to me about your building process. Do you have any specific style? How do you go from planning into final product? Right. Well, I've I've kind of adopted this um, this kind of I guess habit, if you will, uh-huh. um, where when I'm building a new mock, if I do have like a concept like planned out in my head, I kind of build a rough draft of what I'm of what I'm gonna do. So, like, uh-huh. you know, most of the limbs are just, like, you know, basic CCBS bones with some shells slapped onto it. Or, like, you know, like, the head is kind of half-realized and the body has, like, you know, bits and pieces there which I kind of want to work on. And then I kind of just yeah. build off of that frame and, like, you know, replace pieces as I go with, like, you know, maybe custom limbs or, like, you know, switch out design elements. And, yeah, that's kind of, like, my overall process for yeah. most humanoid things, at least. That's um, cool. With creatures and stuff, I usually just start with the head and kind of work my way down the body. Okay. But, um, that's that's more or less my, like, actual build process, like, physically. Sure. As for, like, mentally, like, choosing what to build, mm. um, that's the, <laughs> that, that's another thing entirely. Like, my, what I used to do mm. was I used to just pick a colour scheme and then just fiddle with pieces until I come up with something that looks cool. But yeah. That doesn't work for me as well anymore, unfortunately. So Okay. So. I don't know, I just kind of, if something sparks my interest that I really want to build, I just kind of go for it. But, you know, if I'm feeling uninspired, then I end up just building hot garbage. <laughs> so, I just, okay. I just kind of scrap it and then come back to something else later. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. That's cool that you're, 
well, it's interesting how your style has kind of evolved in some sense. Like you were saying, you know, like, oh, I used to just do this, but now, now I do that. And it's sort of evolved and changed. It's interesting because like, that's always kind of the case in a way like yeah and i mean everyone goes through that. i know i know the way that i've used to build versus the way i build now is very different and i'm yeah. sure it'll change again in a few years time um but that's just kind of the way it works yeah. um and i think sometimes people might in a way kind of misinterpret that as just like i've lost it i'm no longer creative yeah. i suck and it's like no 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 like you know as you as a person change you know the way you make your art will change too so like I have. You just kind of got to roll with the punches, I guess. I have moments like that so often where I just feel like, I, I don't know, <laughs> like I feel like like my last build is just like that's it. I've peaked. That was a complete fluke. I'm not gonna be able to top that. That's just, I uh -huh. like, <laughs> I don't know. I often like second guess myself, and you know, you, you, sure. you feel like you're not as not as good as you are and whatnot. Sure, and I mean like everyone, everyone goes through that to a degree, but like it's it's about, um, I guess it's about you know. Uh, n not not letting that voice win i guess i don't know yeah, yeah. but but yeah i mean but it's also nothing wrong with that it's also always like a curse because i don't know if if you get to the point where you're constantly trying to one-up yourself then you like you linger on one mock for so long and it's just you know you just want to make it perfect whereas sometimes it's good to settle with an imperfect imperfect thing right it's just better for your sanity right yeah no i want to do um because I've, I've been doing all the behind the build stuff recently, which um, I've only got like three videos out for that series, but like, I mean, better than nothing. But um, it, I, w I have way more ideas planned for it, but the one I want to do next is um, on perfectionism, um, mm. which it essentially will talk about how like, while it's good to have a perfectionist attitude because you just want to do your best, you want to make the best stuff, perfectionism yeah. is also a, a curse in a sense and it's also a yeah. bad thing because because like you said you're like well nothing i do will ever be good enough and blah blah blah, blah, blah. and like there there is a point where you do need to stop and go like that's good yeah. you know I, i'm happy with that that's fine and and not second guess yourself and not you know berate yourself or whatever and yeah i'll, I'll go and into also, more detail on the video but it's yeah and it's also like having the strength to just put something down for a while yeah it's a totally thing. yeah because you can it's so easy to get burned out if you just like keep stressing about you know every minor detail yeah especially if, if it's just not working out for you like yeah. i was i was having that when i was updating jay for recently like, sure you know the, he looks a lot different than he did last year mm -hmm. and just like i don't know <laughs> it was it was with the arms i was having such a headache with yeah yeah and i was just like like the rest of the build only took me like a week but the arms took like a month after that right yeah yeah it was not fun yeah 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 because I've I, I know I've um I've had that in the past I could I, I should revisit the mock now but I I saw this really cool image once which was like um if I can find it I'll put it up but it's it's it, it was like a it had all these legs of like an octopus but when it sort of got past the legs it got up to like this demonic like steampunk demon it had like engines on its back and like big like muscular arms and stuff and like had like the teeth of like a dinosaur and stuff like it was it was incredible i was like whoa that's so cool i want to i want to build that um and i i had this rough idea for the tentacles and stuff and as i was attempting to do it i i just couldn't this was like five years yeah. ago um no, I, I know what that means <laughs> yeah yeah and you're just I like you... i can't i can't physically do this and i even said to myself i'm like i need to put this down because it's stressing me out too much and i'm gonna come back to this in like i don't know however many years time when i'm a better builder because like i don't i don't i think this is outside of my 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 field of expertise right now when you get a little bit too ambitious yeah i suppose so yeah i've had that before because yeah. like, i love making i love making lovecrafty and stuff uh-huh and so like i wanted to make like a really like messed up just absolute abomination at once and like very similar to what you're kind of talking about actually yeah yeah because i remember i saw a um, I saw an artwork of a uh, trend Chrome that someone did uh -huh. on the TTV message boards. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I I thought it was so cool, and I was like, I want to build that. I want to build something like that. Mm -hmm. And I got like, I made a sad excuse for a head, and then I was like, Nah, <laughs> right, it's not happening. Right, yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, there's maybe sometimes there's inherently nothing like there's nothing wrong with that. Like giving it a go and then being like, oh, oh well, you know, <laughs> like yeah. you can always come back to it. Or and and like I've said before, like sometimes you need to make the bad art to then make the good art. You know, yeah. Get you the just get the not let it discourage you. Exactly, exactly that. That's cool. That's cool. 
Um, I think that answered that question very nicely. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is, where do you want to see construction as a theme go to in the future? I just want it to exist, honestly. <laughs> I, like, I don't think that's so much to ask. Yeah. I, I want it to exist and I want it to not be Star Wars. Right. That's it. Right. I, I, want to, I want to be able to go to the store and come back with some cool construction stuff that didn't cost me my left kidney. Right. <laughs> It's so, like, and also that isn't just black, white, and tan. Yes. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I want like, I want elves construction. That's what Whoa, I want. Whoa, that'd be cool. I want just like really colorful, oh, cool shit. pieces in like really, like really fancy stuff, like the Akimu shield we got. Yeah. And like, if, actually, I know that that's like a chariot wheel or something originally. Yes. But yeah. You get what I mean. Just like totally cool stuff like that. That's just like, that'll just make like it'll just reinvigorate like construction building and just make it such a joy oh. because like i remember when bionicle g2 came out it was just to me at least because i know that it, a lot of people had been working with hero factory stuff beforehand but mm. to me i i just i just ate that up i just bought every single like new bionicle set and i had such a blast building with those pieces yeah yeah totally yeah. that's awesome i want to experience that again yeah me too me too because i remember when bionicle g2 like first came out in australia and like walking into maya and being like oh it's here um i didn't have any money and i was so upset i was like i don't want to buy one um and uh i was like that at first too yeah. no <laughs> um and 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 just just kind of even like feeling that hype and i don't know what i kind of to a degree missed my uncle g2 because i was just more into system at the time i still bought all the sets and i still really enjoyed building them and all that but i didn't i didn't really mm. use the pieces to make anything um, and sort of now as I've kind of got a lot more into the Bionicle community again, um, mm. I, 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 like you said, I want, I want the whole, we got a new construction theme, whether it's Bionicle, whether it's Hero Factory like 2 or whether it's Galador 2 or whatever, I, I don't care. I just want that experience again and just be like, cool, there's new parts, there's new colors, there's a new thing. Like, let's just do stuff with it. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we're on the same page with that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Oh, it'd just be yeah. so cool. It would be. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the next question because we will kind of come back to that later in the next bit. S spoilers, you'll, you'll, you'll understand, audience. Don't worry. Um, final question, and then we'll go into the audience questions. What or who has been a big inspiration for you? Are there specific things you often look to for ideas, etc., etc.? Ooh. Well, for who, I like kind of answered that before that you know some of the some of the big boys like Mitch Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just all the, like, uh, Anthony as well, Secret Walrus, I, I love his stuff so much. Um, and also just, like, people that incorporate system into their Bionicle builds a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're really big inspirations to me. Um, one of my all-time biggest inspirations that kind of kick-started me into mocking again, because I hadn't really been doing it seriously for a long time, but then in 2015 when Bionicle came back and... Um, Nick Vass yeah. released his um his line of Toa with the uh, new pieces from 2015. Oh, those were so good. <laughs> oh, man. I just... They're so good, yeah. every single one of them. Uh -huh. um, and, yeah, Voz Eon was, like... That was just the main thing that kind of brought me back into it. Yeah. He was just, like, 100% the inspiration for myself, Mark. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, I... I I, I would even like say that I I, I just flat out copied him <laughs> with with like J for V one. Cool, cool. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I just I just really enjoyed that, and yeah. then you know from then on I just started posting my stuff online for the first time. Mm. Like after I made that mock, and you know I just thought to myself, oh this is so cool. This is like the best thing I've ever made. Yeah. Like no, like and then you <laughs> you post it online and then it just gets shit all over. Right. It's like. No, I want to get better. <laughs> so yes, yeah, that's that's kind of like my inspiration too. Just just getting feedback from people, yeah. I love that so much. Yeah, that's I good. Know, that's really really good that you don't take the feedback personally because I just hate that when <laughs> like I give someone feedback or I see someone giving someone else feedback and you see the reply comment as just kind of like, well, but it, the, 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 actually, yeah, yeah, or like you don't know what you're talking about. It's like, hey, just like relax, breathe what if what they've said is true like you can take what i say with a grain of salt yeah. or you can actually like you know choose what you want to use from yeah, it. yeah you know 
Um, yeah, and and, mm. and I'll be like totally honest as well. Sometimes people give feedback that is not the feedback that like y- 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 is true. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. y- you yeah. know, you say I respect your opinion, yeah. but <laughs> no thanks. Yeah, it's exactly exactly <laughs> that. Yeah. Or, or like I've had it a bunch of times where people have been like, mm, "That's that's not very proportionate. That's not da 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 da." And then I've been like looking at the mark and I'm like, "You're a hundred and twenty percent right." Yeah. But I don't want to change well, it. I'm happy with it. You know. Yeah, and that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, as long as you can acknowledge that and you know you can just like be respectful about it, that's what matters. Totally, totally. Yeah. But yeah. No, I I would much rather prefer like a two paragraph, like full analysis and breakdown of my mock with like criticisms everywhere than just a wow or <laughs> nice <laughs> exactly um, i get so excited whenever i see like a paragraph in a in a comment oh, yeah, i'm like yes too. i hate i hate i hate it when you're like oh cool someone commented and it's a one word comment you're like oh go away yeah <laughs> i mean look thanks for commenting that's nice and all oh no, yeah like know. i really do respect that yeah yeah but but yeah, no, I really, I really enjoy some nice meaty comments that I can dig into. Yeah, 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 exactly that. Again, shout out to my boy MC Lego boy. He he always does that. He's a good guy. Aww. Um, where was I? Uh, yeah, I think that was, was that all the question. Um, oh, um, what things inspire you? Not just people. Oh uh, yeah. Well, for for me, it's just like I don't know, just like seeing the re- like seeing the response to what I build is the biggest thing for me because like mm. it, just, it just like. It, it inspires me to just keep going and keep building more because like I don't know this is such a new thing for me because I don't know like when I was building stuff growing up like my friends weren't really that into Lego sure. so you know like if I built something like a lot of people who don't know like what goes into making a Lego mock it's it's a bit harder for them to appreciate it so when you show it to like something that you built to someone they're just like oh that's cool mm. You know, whereas like when you post it online, I get amongst people that know what goes into building Lego stuff. Yeah. They're like, I don't know that like it's just it was just so crazy for me to like see people absolutely love my stuff. Yeah, and I don't know, I just still love that feeling, and I it just pushes me to keep building stuff. Totally, that's cool. That's really cool. Because there is a difference. Like like while it's very nice to to post something and and get heaps of praise for it. There is a difference, in my opinion, between, like, getting wind blown up your ass versus, like, actual grounded critique mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like, yeah. like you know, when I used to do community theatre all the time, for every time people would be like, you're the best actor in the world, it's amazing. And sure, cool, that's nice. Yeah. Like, thank you for the compliment. But at the end, like, eventually it was like, okay, thanks. You know, and then I started to do more like professional stuff and I stopped hearing that and I started getting more like criticism, blah, blah, blah. And eventually realising, like, mm. I want that. I don't want the. I don't want. I want like yeah, constant praise. It's like mean. it's. I don't know. Like there's there's like two things that like I really value, and that's like that's a just criticism from anyone, mm. and b like compliments from people that I really respect. Yes, that's that's the big thing for me. Like I think that's if if I was to like reiterate what I was saying before, just like because back when I was just kind of a lurker, uh-huh. like when you see these like these like crazy like great builders online and you just like like because oftentimes when you're like looking at people online you forget that they're just a guy <laughs> or a yeah. girl they're just like like they're, they're not not a celebrity or anything they're just a person yeah and so like i don't know when you when you actually like get a chance to actually sit down and talk to them it's just such a really cool grounding experience yes and i don't know just to hear that these people that you really respect and admire like your stuff it's just I know exactly really, what you mean. It's really cool. Yeah, 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 totally. I suppose that's it for that question. Let's move on to the next ones, which are the audience questions, which I still have four left from an old podcast. I forgot to actually say on Instagram to get new ones, but eh, we'll get new ones later. So we got four. Good they questions. are good ones, actually. So the first question is from Toa Vendetta, uh, and the question is, what do you think of Bionicle fan fiction? Um, well, I can't really say I've read much Bionicle fan fiction, if any at all, really. Mm-hmm. I know there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of, like, fan fiction projects or, like, you know, just c- continuations of the Bionicle story that are happening yeah. from fans. Yeah. And I think that's really cool that people are, like, you know, totally. really invested in the story and want to, like, branch out on it. And some of it, from what I've seen, is really well thought out and really well written. Yeah. But, like, I don't know, personally, it's not really my thing. Yeah. Because I find that 
mocking and bionicle like as a theme are two very different things for me like i oh, have okay. i have i have like a cabinet full of um like the first three years of bionicle yeah. just like the actual sets and that that to me is just bionicle yeah like that's 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 bionicle that's what i value about it and then mocking i kind of like see as a different thing entirely like i don't find myself mocking characters from bionicle or like you know i don't i don't really go back and visit bionicle related i understand what you mean yes yeah totally yeah. That makes sense. I get. I guess because I I see where you're coming from, especially too. Like I kind of do that. Like more recently, the last two mocks I've built actually, yeah, have been like just I've just used Bionicle and CCBS and System to make a mock. It has been nothing to do with the Bionicle story, um, but I mm. still have a whole bunch of mocks that do fit into a Bionicle story and are my own yeah. storyline, um, which is still like seeped in as much Bionicle lore as I can. But it's not. Um, yeah. It's not. Uh, you know, it, it it is my own poetic licensing on it, you know. Um, and I also combined a storyline and write it, write it, look at me and Matt English, wrote a storyline with Cody G. He's a very old AFOL who, um, very old as in he's, he's, he's like, he used to be on active on mock pages, like, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. Um, and then he went to college and he's in, he's in his dark ages at the moment, but I'm sure he's coming out soon. I'm sure. Um, and so it was really, really fun to, to make characters and write a story and then build those characters with him. And so that was awesome. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I agree with you. There, there, there can be a, a, a sort of discrepancy, I guess, between building Bionicle and building just with Bionicle parts uh, or CCBS, Hero Factory, whatever. Um, and they, I, you know, you can kind of group them in different, different areas. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but to answer the question, um, yeah. So like I do write my own, I guess you could call it fan fiction. I I wouldn't. I don't know. I feel like that's a, a different term to what I write. I don't know. But um, yeah, I really enjoy doing it. I whenever I make a new mark, I, I always enjoy writing a story for it. If if it is if it fits in with my storyline, like the last two I've made didn't, so I didn't write anything. But I didn't mind that, you know. Um, yeah, it's yeah. fun. It's fun to do that. Um, I don't really read much of what other people do or write. I used to. Like, I remember in the old Mock Pages days, I'd spend however long reading the stories that they've written. Yeah. But I've sort of stopped doing that just just, just as a time thing, I guess. Like, part of me doesn't want to read a story and be like, oh, that, was, that was a really long story, but I, it didn't really go anywhere or something. And um, But even yeah. if it's a really good story, I, 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 I would be open to reading it, but I'm, I'm sort of, like, hesitant to take that risk and, you know, spend an hour reading a story and yeah. be like... Oh, or or you know, but um, that's not to discredit what people do. It's just that like I I you know I have higher priorities. I should be doing other stuff. It's it's all right if it's not your thing. Yeah. It's just, it's just yeah. But I mean, like you said, the stuff that I have seen, um, even even um like uh Red Star Forge, um, yeah. they've been yeah. I was I was thinking I was thinking yes yeah. Well, the actually, art yeah. that they do, oh my god, it's incredible. And like I think they're planning like some role play stuff, which, by the way, guys, if you're listening, yeah, hit me exactly. up. I'm keen to do some role play Bionicle. It's, it's, oh. it's essentially it's essentially Dungeons and Dragons with yeah. Bionicles. Which I'd is be really so cool. keen to join them on that. That's incredible. That's a great idea. And if there's going to be a whole storyline with that, oh, that would be so cool. And like, mm-hmm. yeah, some of the stuff they're doing is incredible. Some of the other stuff people like, people do some incredible stuff with that. So I have nothing but respect for that sort of thing. I think that's awesome. Well, hmm. Yeah, from what I've seen, um, it's very well realized, and I'm. Um, I think they're doing a great job with it. Yeah. I, I was um on the production team for a little while, but uh, it, just cool. wasn't, it wasn't really for me because, sure. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I prefer to focus on my own stuff, but yeah. it was really cool to see what they were doing behind the scenes, though. That is cool. That's awesome. Let's go to the next question because I think we answered that nicely. Uh, this yeah. question is from Lego Mine Kid 2332 and his question is, would you enjoy a Galador CCBS theme like Lego pranked us with? So quickly, a bit of background for people who are like, wait, what? Um, when April Fool's rolled around, one of the Lego designers, I don't know his name. Uh, he um, Tooth Dominoes. There you go. He posted a CCBS version of Nick Bluetooth from Galador uh, and pretended like it was, a, you know, new CCBS theme. It's Galador 2. Ah. Mm. And you know, obviously people were like, what? Whoa. And then realized it was April Fool's and were like, ah. Um, but everyone everyone kept reposting the image like, can we please get this? This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, so, please. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
Galador, like, is it's so crazy seeing it like such a, seeing it have such a comeback right now. Right? Yeah. Like, so many people are really into Galador at the moment, which I think is so cool. Mm. Like me included. Like I, I really didn't think much of it. Like when I first saw a few images of it, I was like, ah, yeah, I see why this failed. But like, you know, looking back at it, it had some potential. Yeah, it did. Like, with a bit more of a modern flair to it, it's it could be something really really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, um, like some of the stuff that Lego kind of does with, um, like, app, like, like how Nexo Knights use like the shield things and stuff, and it relates to an app and things like that. And Galador did have the whole like uh, computery aspect to it, didn't it? Or am I mistaking that? Uh, uh, you're asking the wrong guy. No, there you go. Look, really an expert. if it doesn't, my bad. But I'm just saying, I feel like that that could at least be a really cool way to branch out with. Um, CCBS is to, to relate it to like a video game or have it have some sort of cross compatibility with uh, like similar to Lego Dimensions or like Skylanders or something you know that mm. that could be a way to contemporize it and make kids want to get behind it or something or not I don't know I'm not a doctor but you know we'll see okay. um, but yeah I mean <laughs> I I would love to see Galador come back as a CCBS theme I agree with you adding a modern flair to it mm. that'd be so cool and and yeah it is so cool to see how people have brought like this resurgence with Galador. Like I, I bought a, um, a two Galador sets of someone in Perth the other day. Is that, how did you manage that? I haven't seen any Galador stuff in Australia. At all. Uh, well, um, <laughs> so do you, do you use Facebook groups with Lego on, uh, on Not as much as I probably should be, I think. All right. So, so essentially what I do is I'm on a few Facebook groups. One is called, Perth Lego user group one's like Perth buy and sell um, another one's called mm. Oslug which is just like all of Australia um, oh, yeah. and a lot of people buy and sell there and it's interesting because I joined Chicago ones when I was there briefly last year and it's very different market wise like I posted mm. a UCS Darth Vader advanced TIE fighter set on the Chicago page it was up there for maybe two months and no one cared but I posted it uh, in the Perth page within seconds like three people wanted to buy it um, and it's yeah. just the fact that it's like Australia versus America. Like you can get stuff yeah, because, way easier like, in America. If you don't you have can't to pay for shipping. Just yeah. Hell yeah, hit me up. Exactly that. Yeah. Um, so I find that like I've actually made a decent whack of money from just selling Lego I didn't want or things I had multiples of on the like buy and sell pages across like Australia, um, hmm. and it's worked really really well. Yeah, and it's 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 cool and, and it's even cooler because like sometimes people put up Bionicle and no one wants it. I'm like the only person in Perth other than Felix the cat who likes Bionicle. And so um uh it's awesome. It's like I'll I'll buy it. There you go. And you know, eventually Jeez, it just I goes for cheap. Felix in ages. I I know where he works. I sometimes pop by in the city and see him. Um I need to actually have a chat with him because every time every time I go by I'm like I want to stay and chat with Felix, but I'm in such a hurry I can't. I need to just dedicate the time head down and be like Felix Post some mocks. Yeah. No, yeah, the last thing he was working on was really cool. Um, I don't remember. It was like a what weird is. bug centaur thing. Oh, uh, was that the tan one? I can't remember. Maybe not. It was blue. No, maybe not then. I, I probably forgot what it was. Anyways. But he was, yeah, he built some awesome stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, where was I? What was I saying? Um, yeah, but... Uh, so sorry, I on on one of those Perth pages, this guy's like selling Galador and put up like all these Galador sets and for really good prices, like fifteen twenty dollars max. And I was like, oh. So I wanted to buy like heaps of them, but people beat me to it. I was like, huh, damn. Um, and it was people I knew too. I was like, oh, I hate you. Um, Galador fans are pretty rabid. Like they'll yeah. they'll snatch that stuff up. Well, that's the thing. These guys weren't Galador fans. These guys hate Bionicle with a passion. Um, whenever I whenever I like briefly mention it, they're like just take my bionicle i don't want it and i'm like okay <laughs> mm. um or they'll just be like you know oh, i'll burn the bionicle parts or whatever and i'm like oh. but anyway i, I, I know right? i hate that so much yeah it's like come on guys anyway um so yeah they were buying that and i assume they were buying it just for like the joke or just to see what it's like or something i don't know but um so i missed mm. a couple but i bought the gosh i'm sorry i'm not gonna get the names right but it's um He's a robot dude with four arms, and he's got like an orange scope eye and like an orange mohawk. Oh yeah, I it's, bought. I believe. I believe it's Jens. I want to say that's right. That sounds right. Um, so I bought him for like. It's, it's spelled. It's spelled Jens, but I've I've heard yes. that it's pronounced Jens. That is that is the guy. Yes, that's the one I got. And then it's Uni. I think his name is the big red guy. Yeah. I bought him as well. Um, and I was building him the other day. Those are that's yeah. those honestly like if I had to pick two that I would want to get those are 
probably the ones. Yeah, yeah. I was really happy with the two I got. The one that I really wanted was, again, I don't know his name, my bad, but he's a little blue dude with like a little like white kind of, not a horse, but like an animal uh, creature thing. I, w- I want to say, I want to say Napoleon, but it's not, it's like, I think it's just, it's just Nepal. Okay. Ne- Nepal? That's, Nepal? That sounds right. Yeah. N- nipple? N- nipple. There it is. <laughs> So I wanted to get him, but someone beat me to it. And sadly, they didn't have that green guy with the really cool stuff, because I would have bought that in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's um, Euripides. There you go. That's nice. No, Euripides, nice. Um, yeah, but... Uh, I, I, excuse me if I'm pronouncing any of them <laughs> wrong. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're doing better than me. I don't even know the names, so... <laughs> But um, yeah, that's the, the, the just just playing around with those parts. I was like, these are cool. I could easily use some of these. These are awesome. And yeah. just hearing people being like, you know, man, look at look at all the exclusive pieces they made for these sets. Like it would have cost a fortune just to get the molds for this. Like no wonder it didn't do mm-hmm. well. And da da da. And I was like, yeah, right. But just I'm sure applying that to like a CCBS format would be perfect. Yeah. yeah. You know. And I mean, like the um the little um nice segue by the way mm-hmm. um. <laughs> just like the uh just the, the proof of concept is a proof of concept in itself like yeah. the ccbs nick bluetooth like it looks good it looks better than half of the goddamn star wars sets here's a here's a thought here's a thought what if friggin ole kirk christensen whatever is is, is not ole that's the that's the the, uh, the founder but the the current ceo of lego spoke to mr whatever his name is and was like hey buddy you're gonna post some uh, leaked photos of galador just see what the fans think see what public reception is mm. and put it on april fools so they don't believe it and then come two years from now we're getting hot galador and this was just a, this is just a ruse what if what if i mean i it's it's possible yeah. I don't want to discount any theories as of yet, yeah, but it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. That said, because even still, like Ninjago City has a Galador reference on a minifigure shirt, mm. and he is selling um, little mini Galadors that are just like micro figures; they're nothing special. But he, he's yeah, technically yeah. selling them. And then the other Ninjago set has a poster for Galador, and it has a poster of Mata Nui. It's cool as hell. Yeah, I was going to mention. Oh. That anyway. God, I wish I had the money to buy the. Ninjago City sets. It looks so good. They're so oh. cool. I want the dock to like go with Ninjago City, but I'm kind of like, yeah. I don't know. Like, like it's much cheaper. I think it's only like 200 versus 500, which is Aussie prices. That's, you know. But, um, yeah. yeah. Um, but I just want to put the two together. And like, eh. I heard someone at the lug event I was at the other day. They were like, are we going to get a whole range of like modular ninjago like sets now like we got all the modular buildings we're gonna get modular Dude, ninjago i'd be so happy with that i'd be I'd down love yeah. the, like like asian inspired cyber slam type it's cool deal. it's very cool it's, oh, it's so cool yeah yeah but that'd be so interesting like 10 years from now like ninjago movie inspired modulars be like that old movie <laughs> like, yeah I mean, the movie didn't do too great, did it? No, no. I loved it. I watched it. I thought it was fantastic. I did a podcast talking about it if you're really interested. But, like... I, I, I actually... I did listen to that, actually. There you go. There you go. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought it was great. But I know a lot of people were a little like, yeah, about it. But, you know. Mm. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it. I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to see it at cinemas. And I haven't brought myself to, like, rent it or buy right. it. So. I mean, I myself would recommend it. But I feel like given like kind of public like see i'm the kind of person who can see any movie and be like awesome loved every second like when i saw the i mean i know people were very divided with the last jedi but when i saw it i was like this is the greatest thing ever i'm gonna see it the next day like oh um but i know other people some people agree with me on that some people don't blah 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 but like honestly i mean i'm in the same boat as you like i there was there was the um the weird like gambling planet yeah canto whatever that i didn't like but but everything else i honestly really liked Mm, mm. And I saw the movie like four times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I, I think I think Star Wars is a bad example. Like I could see almost any movie that has a publicly like is publicly hated and still love it. Like I'm I'm one of those guys. Like I can just see the there's still good in him. You know, like I yeah. Um, and uh, I'm a bit on the same page. as That's you, cool. Actually, that's yeah. cool. Except the only movie that I I do I do see the like eh, about is Spider Man Three. I do I do see like eh. no, I I really don't like yeah. Spider Man Three. Yeah. That said, like I can still sit down and watch it and like to an extent enjoy it but like when Venom comes on or there's some other stuff I'm like uh, okay you know yeah. but which is a shame oh god if you want to talk about god awful movies <laughs> I, I I for some reason like 
my brother and I decided to go to the movies one time, mm-hmm. and like we didn't know what to watch. We were just like, we'll just watch whatever the, whatever's going yeah. on. Yeah, and um, we thought, hey, what? Why? What? Like, it'll be fun if we go see the new Transformers movie. Oh dear lord. <laughs> We've heard we've heard so many horrible things about it, and we were just thinking to ourselves, <laughs> it can't be that bad. <laughs> yeah, it, it was that bad. Oh, uh-huh. uh, it was. So this bad was bad. the last night. Yeah. 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 I because uh, I saw it when I was in America, and Dad was like, "Go to the IMAX. We'll watch it there." Because I even said I was like, "I don't know." Like, first Transformers cool you know like it was all right it was good it, it had its flaws but it was nice second transformers yeah. uh third transformers uh fourth transformers uh fifth transformers uh but um you know That's accurate, yeah. yeah and um i was I like Look, i didn't see the fourth or third one yeah I, like after mm. the second one i was like nah i'm done yeah <laughs> but um uh i was like look even if it is terrible at least i'm seeing it in imax and this was a huge screen it was very very much worth it for whatever the movie was it was just worth it to see it in a big big cinema you know Mm. and um going in i remember like i don't know three hours into the movie however long it was just sitting there like when is this gonna end and like i hated thinking that because it's like i love transformers so much i love it but um, it's it really is a testament to how bad it is because if yeah. you can make Transformers so boring, yeah, like how bad does it have to be? Yeah, and it's like I don't get why the, car- the Transformers can't be characters. <laughs> why are they yeah. just background things? Like uh, anyway, mm. there was one moment I got so excited though, which I was very surprised by, and then it ended in like a second. Um, there was a moment where Megatron and all the Decepticons. Oh, was he Galvatron in that? Movie? No, he's Megatron. Um, they were all like walking through like a, a ban- I think it was an abandoned city and then the Autobots were like also in the city and Megatron was just like split up find them and it it's for like a split second took me back to like Transformers Armada or like Cybertron mm-hmm. or Energon like back in the day when I used to watch Transformers as a kid and I got so excited I was like ah it's just like that I was like yeah and then within seconds Megatron's like leave evacuate like flee ah and I was like ah the one moment I was getting excited for they killed it in seconds I was like dang it so I don't even remember that part. That's how I... <laughs> there you go. I've just erased the entire movie from my mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that is... And you. that is why we want to bring back Galador as a CCBS yes. theme. <laughs> um, uh, I'd say we illustrated our point pretty well. We did. We did. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. We've got two more here. Um... This is by Manorant Matorin and is you only get one condiment for the rest of your life. Which one do you choose? All right. Um, geez, that's a that's a tough one. I'm gonna shake the boat here. Yeah. I don't like condiments. Oh well, I'm yeah. honestly I'm fairly similar. Like, oh. I, I'm I'm very like I enjoy foods how they are. Yes, me too. Like, I, I enjoy like especially with like with meat. I really like just the natural flavor to come through. I don't want to drown it out with tomato sauce or anything. Me too. 100%. But, um, I don't know. I don't mind the sweet chili sauce with chicken nuggets. I don't know. Sure. Sure. Nice. Nice. Yeah. No, I'm the guy who just, like, typically will say, like, can you please not put any, like, mustard or blah, on my thing? And sometimes they're like, yeah. what? Why? What do you want? And it's just like, don't judge me. Like, just, just serve me my hot dog. Um, <laughs> you know, but, uh, I mean, like, like, some like for example, if I have ribs or something, I love me some good barbecue sauce on my baby back yeah. ribs. There's some there's some really nice um, I think it was like Heston's bar- smoky barbecue sauce that uh-huh. we used to get. It was oh yeah, that was that was nice. Yeah, like I I will I will like definitely and stuff. yes yeah sure sure like I'll definitely have exceptions to that rule. But I am I am a man of like you said I love the natural flavor of whatever something is. And there you go. Mm. The uh, the Bionicle Inspiration Series podcast. The condiment, the condiment, <laughs> the condiment podcast. <laughs> is that is that your is that your answer to the question? Shall we move on? Uh, yeah, I'll just say smoky barbecue sauce. There you go, nice. Um, the final question that we have here is by Shadow King Mox and is called. What do you think of the Bionicle community today? Is called that apparently. <laughs> there you go. Oh. <laughs> but what do you think of the Bionicle community today? Well, I mean, it's it's very interesting to see. Um, you know, there, there are the occasional turf wars and whatnot going on. You know, there's drama pops up here and there, which, you know, it's it all seems very petty every now and most of the time. But all in all, I'd say, you know, it's just amazing to me that we're still moving forward. Like, 
we're still here. Yeah. We still enjoy doing what we do. And, like, it doesn't look like there's any... There's no signs of us stopping anytime soon. Mm. Which I think is remarkable for a theme that, you know, is almost 20 years old now. Yeah. Jeez, it is, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. That is that. That is remarkable. That is true. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also really cool to see that there are still, like, so many young people that are just now coming into it. Yeah. Totally. Which yeah. Is, it's crazy. Like, mm. where, where are they getting those parts from? You know? <laughs> yeah. Where, where did they hear about bonkles? Yeah, yeah. I remember speaking to a kid at... Um, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I remember speaking mm. to a kid at a um, Lego convention in Perth, and they were... Uh, they were like, uh, they they were like, I love Bionicle. I was like, Ah, oh, cool. Uh, let's under you. Like, <laughs> don't yeah, die. To, Stay as you are. To Cossy and says, "Is that Gali?" Yeah, that's the one exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but he was like, uh, I was like, Oh, cool. Which which Bionicles do you have? And he's like, Oh, I've got um, I've got uh, like just G two. I mean, he didn't say G two, but he's like, I've only got the new stuff, like essentially G two. He's like, I don't have any of the um, like G one stuff. That stuff's like a hundred years old at this point. Yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, you're not. Yep, you're not wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it, it, you're right though. It is that's the thing of like, yeah, where did you get that? Or it's like, it's like kids who are fans of Deadpool. It's like, how are you fans of, like, you're like ten years old. You shouldn't be watching that. You shouldn't be reading those comics. Mm. They are not suited for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. But hey, you know, as long as they're having fun, that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm just happy to see that people still appreciate it. Totally. And like, I don't know. It's just it's it's so crazy that Bionicle is just embedded in so many people's like brain from when they were a kid. Yeah. So you know, like, if I if I show a picture of a Bionicle to a friend from uni, they're just like, oh man, I used to have Bionicles growing up. So who who have you ever shown a photo of a Bionicle to, and they haven't said that? Exactly that. Yeah. I remember um, it blew my mind. I had a, a an art class, and um, they were like, "Take any picture you want, and you just have to like paint it again in black and white." And I was like, "Sick!" And then I was like, "I was like any photo you want." And they're like, "Yeah, man." I was like, <laughs> "So I got a photo of um <laughs> like the Toamata, just like like one of the original photos, just like the six of them like standing together in a line, and I like painted that yeah. in black and white." And the teacher was like, "Oh yeah, cool, Bionicle, like nice." And I was like, "You, you know Bionicle?" Because like I don't know, they were like, I don't know, they were like they're, they're they're obviously much older than me, but they were like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And like later on, as like classes mm. would go, because I would still do Lego stuff, and she would like kind of mention it briefly, like just whatever. And she's like, "Yeah, you know, like or, or, or do like Ben, like you got heaps of Lego, so like you know you could make a Lego thing or a Bionicle thing." And she she just like kept referencing Bionicle, and I was like, "How do you know Bionicle so well? Like that's." That's mm. awesome. <laughs> yeah, and it is, and like I mean sometimes people are like I had the red one and you're like ah the red one excellent. Yes, <laughs> the red one. <laughs> but um like I think I had a binocle shirt on or I think I actually had a binocle like um uh, drinking bottle once. I think I, I brought that to class one day and someone was just like oh the mask of light what a great movie that and they're like I'm going to watch that this weekend and I was like nice nice random stranger <laughs> like go you Aww. you know. That's sweet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was just bringing them back to their childhood for a second. It was good. It's such a wholesome thing because, like, I don't know. There's so many things like when you when you mention that people are just like, "Oh yeah, I remember that." But then with Bionicle, it's like, "Oh, I remember it, it that." It is, isn't it? It's exactly it's like, that. Yes, you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Totally. It's awesome that. Um, I suppose to quickly answer the question for me, um, what do I think about community? Um, it's good. It's good. You know, uh, it's good. Exactly like you said. It's awesome that people are still you know, doing, doing it, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. it's, it's good that, uh, you know, like exactly that, you know, we're able to kind of branch over to Instagram and Flickr and, and all sorts of sp- places like that. And even, even like we were saying at the start, even though it's for a contest and I didn't realize, um, it's good to see people doing more like collaborative stuff. Um, yeah. cause that's something that really wasn't the case in the past. Like, um, Whenever I heard a collab thing, it's always, you know, system guys that going to a convention together and so they bring all their stuff and put it for a convention. But, like, Bionicle people, almost, maybe not almost exclusively, because sometimes people will do collaborative stuff for a convention, but almost exclusively mm-hmm. Bionicle collabs nowadays are, are very much, uh, you know, me and John here wanted to build, you know, some animals, so we did a collab. Here, here's a bunch of animals we made yeah. together, and that that is, and in itself is cool. It's like we don't live anywhere near each other, but we just built the same thing, just because why not? And that's cool, you know. And like people get really, really creative with collabs. Like, yeah. um, I don't know if you've heard about this whole the eye shenanigan. 
No, actually. Type deal. All right. So, what what it is is there's um every now and then some prominent builders will like end up coming out with collabs from like there was um the slizers that people did a while back. Oh yeah, and there they was, did like the um, Rakshi stuff the, as well. Yeah, the Rakshi, yeah, yeah. the saints that have the like yeah. um or, like circle things behind mm. them, and like. Apparently, what, what like the seed for these collabs is each of them have been messaged by this anonymous figure known as the Eye. What? Who has brought them all together to make these things? Huh. And it's just it's this big mystery. No one knows who the Eye is. It's Jafer calling it now. Y- you got me. <laughs> but but no, it's there um. You go. So yeah, like that's been kind of the where most of the recent collabs have been coming from, and I think that's really cool. Like it's yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's just this like layer of mystery and intrigue to it, which just is like I don't know. It's like it's like really captivating to me. Like I really want to. You know, well, there you I go. I want to know more. Yeah, that's interesting. There you go. Huh. Interesting. Oh, also with the Bunnacook community in general, like um, uh, just 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 the fact that because um, <laughs> going back to that lug event that I was talking about before, um. As I was building that Galador thing, some people were just like, "Why are you building Galador? This is a terrible theme." And I was like, "Well, I want to see what I can do with the parts." Like, you know, and it's like, "Man, people love Galador at the Shut moment." Your right? heretic mouth. Exactly that, yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, and and I was like, "Oh man, in the Bionicle community," and the guy like stopped me. He's like, "There's a Bionicle community." I'm like, "You're damn right. There's a Bionicle community." And he's like, "Are you? Uh, how are there? Are there ten of you?" And I was like, "No, no good, sir." And I was like. We at Brick Fair had 500 people. I want you to know. Um, or maybe it wasn't 500. I don't know. But the, like the numbers <laughs> at Brick Fair, they were like the dominant freaking theme there. And I was like, ha And he was like, oh, there you go. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and that alone is really cool. The fact that, like you said, a theme that's almost 20 years old is dominating one of the top three LEGO conventions. Man, that's cool. Go us. Yeah. One of my, like, my, my biggest, like, hope for the Bionicle community is that it stays together long enough for me to like see everyone at Brick Fair one year. Yeah, me too. I want to see that because I, I, don't know, I just have not got the time or money to go to Brick Fair. Yeah, it's tough sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> but I really want to go there one yeah, year. Yeah, totally. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I, I said this in a. Uh, I'd, I'll probably upload this podcast before I upload that bis, but um, I did a I did a bis pod a bis episode the other day where um, I don't know how I got on the tangent. It was late, and so I was like, <laughs> I was just, it was a goofy episode. Um, and uh, I mentioned, um, I was like, 20 years time when I'm doing this, and I'm like 80 years old or whatever. Not that I'd be 80 in 20 years time, but you know what I mean. Um, I was <laughs> like, and at that time, like, I reckon what I'm going to do is I'm going to make Cossie a Turaga. And I was like, I reckon, I, reckon, I reckon I'll do that. Like, when I'm old, I'll make Cossie myself, Mark, old. Um, and, uh, That's cool. and I was like, that'd be, that'd be really fun. And then, and then I was like, there'd be people who like, are like y- years younger than me, but they'd be like, I've been following Kashi for like 20 years. I remember when his self mark was a, was a Toa, not a Taraga. And I was like, I was like, oh, that'd be really cool. Like if, if it, you know, if it, Binocle surviving that long and, uh, mm. uh, yeah, pe- people making their, their self marks like Taraga because they are Taraga now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's a sweet idea. It's cool, isn't it? Mm. And it'd be cool. Mm. Um, I suppose that answers that question. Um, and that is it for the questions that we have. Uh, and unless Jafer has questions of his own, but uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm pretty I figured, good. Yeah. Um, so we've been going, going a good amount of time. Uh, I suppose we'll finish it off here. Um, yeah. Thank you yeah. very much for being on the podcast, Jafer. It's been a, been yeah, a nice thanks, chat. Thanks for having me no on. Worries. I've, I've really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, it was good fun. Um, if people want to find you, where can they find you? Um, well, you can find me on Flickr, Instagram, uh, Facebook, yeah, I, I mean, I have a YouTube, but I haven't uploaded anything. Sure, sure. But yeah, I'm I'm essentially just J4 or J4 mocks everywhere, so I shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll put all those links in the description. Be sure to check those links in the description because, well, J4 stuff will be in there. Be sure to check out what J4 has done. I don't know if I've included photos of his dragon collab, but I was so tempted to talk about it in this episode because my god, is one of my favorite mocks that I've seen in a long time. Please check it out. It's oh. great. Um. So yeah, check out all the links in the description for Jafa as well as the mocks you saw in today's episode. Uh, and if you have questions for the podcast, theme ideas for BIS, mock ideas for BIS, chuck me a message in my social media, which will also be in the description. Thanks again, Jafa. Um, I suppose that's it. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs>